Now you've drilled your enclosure, done a test fit, and it's all working okay, it's time to think about finishing. Now there's two areas to consider. First up is painting or not, and second is labels and artwork. Now this aluminum looks pretty nice. You don't have to do a lot to it. You could just sand on a brushed finish and call it done. Or you could take something like a Dremel and grind a pattern into the surface. Or you can get really serious and use something like acid to etch a pattern into the surface. I've never tried that, but it can look totally awesome. Now, because the aluminum is kind of soft and black labels over bare aluminum are a little bit hard to read, I like to put on a coat of paint, which uh, helps to protect the finish and also gives you a nice color foundation for whatever artwork and labels you're going to put over it. This is just an off-white, and uh, any artwork that you put over this will look really clear and nice. Now, if you've got a pedal like this that has a lot of knobs and switches, you really need to think about putting some labels on there, otherwise you don't know how it works, right? So, you know, the most simple thing you can do is just take a post-it note like this and handwrite some labels on there. You know, this was just a temporary solution, though, until I get my artwork on there. A step up from that is just to take a Sharpie and write right onto the surface. And if you have good handwriting and you're artistic, you can make it look pretty great, especially if you take a whole bunch of colored Sharpies. Uh, you can make it look really nice and artistic. Or you can take acrylic paints, and if you're good with a paintbrush, I've seen some beautiful hand-painted enclosures. But if you're like me and not that artistic and lousy handwriting, this is a labeler that can print out black text on clear tape and you snip it up and put it under the knobs. The only problem is that when you go to clear coat it, the individual labels cause little raised areas that don't look totally perfect. And if you're a perfectionist like me, you may want to consider something like this. This is a clear decal paper with an adhesive backing. So you prepare your artwork and labels in the computer and then you print it out with your inkjet printer onto here and then you can cut it out and stick on in one, in one piece over the surface of the pedal. The only problem with the adhesive backing is it's hard to place it just right. Uh, and you get air bubbles under there. Slightly better is this water slide decal paper. And this is what I use. Same process, you prepare your artwork in the computer, you print onto here, but then what you do is you clear coat it, soak it in water, and then when it's wet, it slides off the, uh, the backing onto the surface of the enclosure and then while it's wet, you can still move it and get it positioned just right. So with that, you can get really great results. This is a pedal I made with the artwork done in the computer, printed onto the uh, water slide decal, and it's over a just sort of off-white spray painted finish. And then when you get it on there, you clear coat it, and you can get really professional results. Now I should mention, there's another option. You can buy professionally powder coated enclosures, which are really nice. Lots of colors to choose from, a very durable finish. And it's probably better than anything you could do at home, unless you're really good at this stuff and you, you know, bake your finishes in a dedicated oven and that kind of thing. You can also give them specifications for drilling and they'll drill holes for you. You know, you can say two knobs, one LED, one switch, and they'll do it for you. But I like to show you how to do it yourself so that when you run into situations like this, for example, tiny little enclosure, it's really hard to get everything in there and working properly without short circuits. So it's good to know how to model it, uh, position things just right, and drill it yourself. Uh, probably more accurate than you can have them do for you with uh, specifications. And, uh, you know, it's good to know how to paint it and everything yourself, too. So I'm going to take you through the entire process of making a pedal like this, uh, starting with surface preparation, then priming, painting, preparing your artwork and labels in the computer, printing it out on water slide decals, applying the decal, and then clear coating it. And hopefully you'll be able to get some really nice professional results. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, surface prep. All right, so the enclosure is drilled and ready, and I've got some 150 grit general purpose sandpaper here that I'm going to use. I've wrapped it around this rubber sanding block just to make it easy to hold. And I'm gonna do some light sanding here. My goal is just to get rid of any scratches or gouges in the surface, and uh, the aluminum is pretty soft, so this won't take too long. But the, uh, the sandpaper will gum up a little bit, and every once in a while you just wanna tap it out and uh, You'll see the dust basically just fall out of the sandpaper. So you want to do all surfaces and don't forget the corners. And you can see I'm always moving the sandpaper in the same direction in a straight line. I'm not moving in circles or switching left or right. Uh, in fact, this will give you a nice brushed finish if you want to leave it as raw aluminum. You can use a slightly lower grit, maybe a 100 grit or 80 grit sandpaper, and you end up with some nice uh, grooves all running in the same direction. Once the sanding looks good, I'm going to switch to the synthetic steel wool. 
I got a couple grits here, starting with fine, which is the same as single aught, and then I'll switch to extra fine, which is the same as triple aught. You can use regular steel wool too if you like. I prefer these plastic pads because they don't drop steel shavings all over the place. Uh, steel wool can be kind of messy to work with. So you can see I'm not spending too long on each surface. I'm just basically taking off any edges that were left by the sanding. And every once in a while I like to blow off the, uh, the workspace to get rid of any dust that I've been making. Once again, it's best to move all your strokes back and forth in the same direction. You don't want to be switching directions or moving in circles because you'll just be making uh, new scratch patterns that your eye will be drawn to. Now I'm just going to switch to the extra fine triple aught pad and I'm going to run over all the surfaces one more time real quick just to give it a nice final polish before applying the primer. Of course the primer will fill in any minor imperfections but it's always a good idea to start with the surface as clean as you can. Here's some before and after pictures. That's it before sanding, after sanding, and after the steel wool pad. Now with the basic surface prep done, I'm just going to clean up my work area here. Try to get it as dust free as possible in preparation for spraying, so I'm just going to take this piece out of here. I'm going to use some mineral spirits to wipe down the enclosure and get off any remaining dust. Be sure to wear eye protection and gloves when working with solvents. You'll be surprised how much gunk comes off of there with the solvent. Take a look at that. Now you can use mineral spirits or naphtha, just something that's going to flash off quickly and not leave the surface wet or leave any residue on it, because the next thing we're going to do is spray it with primer. I mentioned it's a good idea to wear gloves. Yeah, <laughs> well, this is why. Getting ready to spray now, it's always a good idea to start with a piece of scrap so you can get a feel for how the can of spray you're using works. This time I'll be trying this Krylon Indoor-Outdoor White Primer. I've used Rust-Oleum with good results. Uh, it probably doesn't matter too much what brand you use, just be sure to read and follow the instructions that are printed on the can. So I'm supposed to shake this for about a minute, and then uh, you use multiple light passes that has a real quick drying time and you just wait about a minute between coats. So I'm just going to experiment a little and see how it works. Sure looks like this goes on light. After shaking it a little more, it's going on a little thicker, but it looks like I'll be doing a lot of slow passes to build up enough paint. Alright, it's time to start painting the actual enclosure. I'm going to be using these painter's pyramids. These uh, will get the enclosure up off the work table so they don't stick to the table while they're drying. These come in real handy for all kinds of finishing tasks. Now I'm standing up so I can move around while I'm spraying. I do my first pass nice and smooth across the tops. Then I do the side and move around to hit the next side and so on all the way around the enclosure, making sure I'm hitting the corners and everything. I'm holding the can about six or eight inches from the surface, and for each pass, I'm starting about an inch off to one side and continuing as I move across the surface about an inch past the other side. If you start with it pointed right at the surface, you can get a big wet spot. Now I'm supposed to wait about a minute between coats. It's pretty fast drying. And while I'm waiting, I'll just keep shaking the can to keep the paint flowing. I'll probably have to do five or so coats before I'm done, but with only one minute drying time between coats, it'll go pretty quick. Second coat's the same as the first. I stopped and took a picture after each coat so we could see a progression. I think I did about five or six coats in the end. And don't forget, we'll be covering this up with a few more coats of colored top coat. Now, if you're planning on painting more than one enclosure at a time, here's a trick for getting them out of the way while they're still a little bit wet. I'm using some little strips of wood cut offs from another project as stickers so I can sit them on a different piece of cardboard. I'm just going to leave the enclosure sitting on these stickers so that as it dries it doesn't stick to the cardboard. And then you can just lift up this whole thing like a platter and put it somewhere else to finish drying. I've got the second enclosure here. It's a 1590 BB that I've already done the surface prep for. 
And generally speaking, I prefer to paint an enclosure after it's been drilled rather than before, because you're much more likely to scratch the paint while drilling. But since I'm all set up here, I'm going to go ahead and paint this one today and just see how it goes. Once the primer is dry, it's time to put on the top coat. Today I'll be trying out this Krylon indoor-outdoor satin in the ivory color. There's lots of colors to choose from, but uh, lighter colors work better if you're going to be applying artwork over it. The process is the same as with the primer. I'm holding the can about six or eight inches away, doing controlled smooth sweeps across, starting about an inch off the edge and going an inch past the other edge. And I'm going to wait about a minute between coats. Here's another photo series of the five top coats going on. Each photo is a couple minutes apart. Next up, I'll show you how to prepare your artwork and labels in the computer, and then we'll come back and apply the water slide decal. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks for watching.